What's going on, everybody? Paul from Hashtag Sports. Hey, listen, it, today is actually a very important day in the NFL world. Uh, as you get into the offseason, odd days like random Tuesdays become relatively important. Well, today happens to be one of those days. And officially at 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, the franchise, franchise tag window opens for NFL franchises. And that's the ability to take a player and offer them a one-year fully guaranteed contract. Now, some players would jump at that opportunity because we're going to get to the dollars and cents. I'm going to make sure that everybody understands what those tags are. And it sounds like a pretty good deal, but other players, it's just not the situation that they're looking for. Let's talk a little bit about those franchise tags and what they ultimately are and truthfully what they mean. So, the franchise tag is an opportunity for an NFL team to take a player that's currently on their roster and offer them a guaranteed one-year deal at a really high salary, and that's it. Th that's it. Uh, now, it gets a little bit more complicated when you talk about how those salaries are figured out. We'll give you what those numbers actually turned out to be this year. They change every year. But the franchise tag isn't the only time that you could add a player to your roster because there's multiple different types of tags and some of them allow players to negotiate with other teams and then bring a contract back. We'll talk about that process as well so that way everybody understands. So we're talking about very big dollars and cents here. When we start talking about the franchise tag, there's three major categories and the Buffalo Bills perfect example of this is going to be Tremaine Edmonds. Tremaine is going to be in the conversation for a franchise tag because if he doesn't have a contract extension, uh, Buffalo usually signs players a year ahead of time for those that they want to keep. Uh, just like Ed Oliver, as an example, he's playing on his fifth year option. Uh, the Bills bought, you know, restructured Josh Allen after his fifth year option, but they did it while he was still in that window. That was their opportunity with Tremaine last year. Didn't get it done, right? So now Tremaine is a very obvious candidate for the franchise tag. So is Jordan Poyer. Um, and, you know, those are the types of players that typically you hear franchise tag being talked about. Uh, let's see if it's realistic, okay? So for starters, we're going to start with the non-exclusive franchise tag. The non-exclusive franchise tag is actually the most common. So what that means is a player gets offered a guaranteed one-year deal. All of these are one-year deals. And they have the ability to go out and negotiate with other teams. Yeah, that's true. So you could have... Um, Let's say Dawson Knox, they were going to franchise tag Dawson Knox and they give him the non-exclusive franchise tag for the tight end position. That would be a one year deal of eleven point three six million dollars. And he could go negotiate with another team and then bring an offer back from that team. Buffalo can then have the opportunity to match or lose that player. Right. If they lose that player, they get two first round picks. It's a wild process, isn't it? So. In that example, right, what effectively what that means is when you talk about the non-exclusive franchise tag, that's taking the top five highest salaries at that position and averaging them, right? That's how you get to your non-exclusive franchise tag number. It's the top five salaries at that position. So let's just talk about it real quick. That means quarterback this year is $32.4 million. Running back is 10.1. Wide receiver is 19.74. Tight end is $11.3 million. Offensive line, that's offensive line. That's centers, guards, tackles. It's all the same. <clears throat> $18.24 million. Defensive end is 19.73. Uh, cornerback is 18.14. Safety is 14.46. And kicker or punter is 5.39. Now, I excluded linebacker. Here's the reason. Linebacker is the cream of the crop across the defensive front, right? So when you talk about defensive players, the linebacker is the most expensive. If the Bills wanted to non-exclusive tag Tremaine Edmonds, it would cost them $20.93 million. Now that number's locked in. Be a one-year deal guaranteeing him $20.93 million. And we've talked about Tremaine Edmonds being a $100 million player. We weren't kidding, right? And we've said it for two years on this on this channel be prepared. Tremaine Edmonds is a hundred million dollar player. Whether you believe in him as a player or not, the truth is the dollars and cents say he's going to be a, over a hundred million dollar player. So $20 million a year or nearly $21 million for one season isn't really all that far off from where you might land anyway. So 
Do the Bills offer him the non-exclusive franchise tag, give him the opportunity to go negotiate with other teams, bring an offer back? Is that possible? Sure is. If he does sign with another team, that team will give up two first-round picks in order to sign Tremaine Edmonds. So, you know, you, you run your risks there. But that's the non-exclusive franchise tag. Now, mind you, there's a date that teams have uh, to offer this, right? That window does close. And then players have a window as well in order to sign it. You may remember some players like Le'Veon Bell refused to sign his franchise tag and then was fined. Uh, there's a time period, I believe it's in July, they have to have their franchise tag signed by uh, sometime in July. So that was the non-exclusive franchise tag. But let's talk about the exclusive franchise tag. The numbers actually for that one aren't done. And exclusive franchise tags are usually something you see quarterbacks do. Um, and while the non-exclusive and the exclusive franchise tag sound similar, they're actually a bit different. So the exclusive franchise tag is taking the top five salaries or top five cap numbers rather um, for a position after this year's free agency. So you're offering that player a guaranteed contract and saying, we're going to guarantee you a top five salary after the free agency period. And that is different from the way things used to be. So an exclusive franchise tag means they cannot negotiate with anybody. It is a one-year deal, but they are guaranteed to make a top five salary post free agency. So that means a player like Tremaine Edmonds, as an example, if you were to allow him to go out and be an exclusive free agent, uh, he would make the top five post free agency. So there was another linebacker that got a monster deal in this free agency that would directly impact the exclusive franchise tag. It doesn't impact the non-exclusive. Those numbers are already done, but it would impact the exclusive franchise tag. You get no trade compensation because nobody can offer that player a deal and you get that player for whatever it costs you. You are completely blind to that. You're going to sign him for whatever it turns out to be. So the exclusive franchise tag is the top five salaries post free agency. It's a wild number, man. It's absolutely wild. You don't see that one used that often anymore. Uh, that used to be used pretty exclusively. Now it's not uh, due to that. You just don't know what you're signing a player for. But that leaves one more. And it's not often used, but it's the transition tag. And what the transition tag allows you to do is it allows you to put a tag on a player for much less of a salary, guaranteed salary. Again, all one-year deals. They can, like the non-exclusive tag, go out and negotiate with other teams. And they can bring one offer back. And I guess that's something that we should talk about right now is how does a player bring a contract back? Well, with the non-exclusive and the transition tag, when the player goes out and finds the deal, you know, goes out and talks to a deal, they can bring only one offer back. That's it. They get one offer they can bring back to the club that they're currently held under, right? So in this case, let's, um, Ryan Bates is a, is a great example of this, right? So Ryan Bates went out, found a deal, and then brought one deal back and said, listen, this is what, I think it was Chicago, if memory serves me correctly, this is what Chicago is offering me. What are you going to do? Um, if a player doesn't find a deal, they still get a guaranteed salary. But if they want to go out and search for a deal, they're welcome to do that, bring one deal back. And then Buffalo has one offer, like they have one opportunity to match or beat that deal. So they can look at a deal like in Ryan Bates' example. Again, I believe it was Chicago. He brought back a multi-year deal. Buffalo looked at that and said, oh, we'll match that deal, right? Bates stayed in Buffalo. The transition tag numbers are significantly lower, though, because the transition tag is based off of, and I'm just going to double check this. Yes, the highest 10 salaries at the position, or if that player is already within that top 10, a 120% increase based off their current salary. So we'll uh, take a look at what those transition tag numbers look like. They're, they're significantly lower. Again, you're looking at top 10 salaries as opposed to top five salaries with the franchise, in the non exclusive franchise tag or the top salary, top five salaries post this year's free agency for the exclusive tag, the transition tag numbers look a lot different. For linebacker, instead of being nearly $21 million, it'd be 17.48. Let's go through the whole defense. A defensive end is 17.45. Defensive tackle, 16.1. Uh, linebacker, as I just said, about $17.5 million. Cornerback is 15.79. Safety, 11.87. 
So a pretty significant difference, multi, you know, several million dollars in some cases. Uh, usually, uh, like just as an example, a defensive end was 19.73. Here, there's 17.45. Um, so a pretty big dip there uh, and saves you some money. But you don't get any draft pick compensation if you lose a player to that offer process. So that's the difference between the transition tag. While it does cost you a couple million dollars less, and that's really all it is, just a couple million dollars. While it may cost you a million to a few million dollars less, depending on the position, um, you don't get any trade compensation if you lose that player to an offer. Now, mind you, you get the opportunity to choose to match that offer. But if you don't choose to match that offer, you lose that player entirely. So that's sort of the position that the Bills are in when you're looking at Buffalo specifically. What do you do? Do you transition tag Tremaine Edmonds and let him go try and find an offer and you're guaranteeing him $17 million? Maybe. I mean, you look at Roquan Smith's deal. You look at Fred Warner's deal. Like, it, it, he's a $20 million linebacker, more probably more than that in the free agent market, Right. That's going to be what he is. So one deal, one deal at 17.45 isn't really all that bad. But the fact is, he's still going to be able to go out and try and find an offer somewhere. And you might not be able to match it. It's just the way that the finances work. Buffalo doesn't have a ton of space in order to gamble like that. Could you offer him the non-exclusive tag and then hope that somebody offers him a big deal and you get two first-round picks? Well, that's what most NFL teams do. Now, again, franchise tags can be fully guaranteed upon signing. So it is something that, hey, you want to offer a franchise tag to a player, they have until yep July 15th in order to sign that. The teams have until March 7th in order to offer them. Um, yep, that's it. So they have until um, March 7th in order to offer them. Player has until July 15th to try and work out an extension for all tag players. If no extension is reached, then the player is just going to play under whatever that salary is. So. There's some likely candidates for transition tags around the league. You talk about Orlando Brown with the Chiefs, um, Lamar Jackson with the Ravens, right? There's some very likely players, but there's also some players who could be transition tagged. Tony Pollard is a great example of a player that you might transition tag if you're Dallas because you don't, you know, you're already paying Dak, you've already paying Zeke. Like, but if they really like Tony Pollard, maybe they transition tag him just to see if they can keep his price a little lower just for a year or two. Um, so a lot of things are out there in the NFL circles right now. This is actually a really important time for the money that you're going to spend in 2023. And I hope this explains a little bit of what that process looks like. Listen, salary cap keeps going up, but franchise tag numbers, this is something that's been around now for decades at this point. The formula keeps changing. And I hope you guys are caught up to date. Paul from Hashtag Sports. Check out uh, Hashtag Sports. Uh, sorry, HTagSports.com. Uh, we've got uh, 32 teams in 32 days. We're breaking down every single team in free agency, the draft, uh, salary cap numbers, and a real quick to read article. And uh, anything else you guys need, you can hit us up on Twitter at underscore hashtag sports. That is over here. I'm a terrible weather man. Uh, and thank you again to Mr. Rogers Holmes, who is our sponsor uh, for this video, as well as the Williams Syndrome Foundation, the hashtag sports charity. Make sure to join the Patreon, like and follow. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you guys soon. Hello, fellow Bills fans. Sean Rogers, Realtor and lead of the Mr. Rogers Homes team. Did you know that real estate is one of the best ways to build wealth? And right now is one of the best times to own an investment property in Arizona. Please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions so we can take the next step to your financial freedom here in the Valley of the Sun, utilizing real estate. As always, God bless America and go Buffalo!